Hi everyone, I hope you enjoyed Jason's session on Azure. Azure has so many great technologies that let you solve some of the common problems that you have with development, like data access, authentication, blob storage, queuing, offline data access, and push notifications. So you don't have to go through the pain of implementing that all yourself. And it just saves you a huge chunk of time. Now in this session, we're gonna look at UI testing. And you may have seen that on the schedule that analytics was also gonna be covered. But Kim will actually be looking at that in the next session when he's discussing Hockey App. In this session, we're gonna look at how we can automate the testing of our app's user interface so we can run through the scenarios of our app that we're using and eventually see how those tests are gonna work on a larger number of devices once we run those tests on Test Cloud. Before we begin, a little bit about me. My name's Glenn Stevens. I'm one of the trainers here for Xamarin University and I've been with the Xamarin team for about three years and I've been developing software for a long time. I've been working with the .NET framework since the betas of .NET. I've been working with the Xamarin tools for roughly around six years and I've published plenty of apps for iOS and Android. And in general, I just love writing mobile apps in .NET. Now Xamarin University is the place to go for the most comprehensive and up-to-date Xamarin focused training. And we have over 70 live online classes. We have self-guided learning on some of our certification courses. There's office hours that help you talk with an instructor when you have an issue or a problem that you want to talk through. There's guest lectures, lightning lectures, and the ability to, to be certified as a Xamarin certified developer. So why not start a trial and see how Xamarin University can help you. But there are, in fact, two things that we want to look at in this session. First, we're going to briefly look at unit testing your mobile code. It's identical to unit testing any other code. So if you do this today, you're actually well positioned to continue the practice. And it's also assumed that you're already familiar with unit testing, but if that's not something you've done in the past, I'm gonna give you just a quick introduction to the mechanics of it today before we jump into the second part where we're testing our user interface. But let's start with unit testing. And some of you might have tried unit testing in the past and found it to be tedious, time consuming, or perhaps not valuable. And I'm going to suggest it's because you probably weren't properly motivated. Testing is a critical part of our app success and validating that your classes perform the way they are expected to perform has a lot of advantages. And here's just a few. So first off, unit testing reduces bugs. And this is less of a consideration today with the advent of smart IDEs, better frameworks. But it, it's still a valid point. And it's particularly useful in library code, which is shared across apps or platforms but it's not as helpful if you're only testing what you've written. For example, unit tests should be written to test the intended result of the code based on the design and not on the code itself. Now it can also provide helpful documentation on your methods. So it can provide insight to new members of the team as to what a method is supposed to do. And when companies are acquired and a software audit is performed, missing or incomplete unit tests will actually downgrade the viability of the code base. Next, they can also reduce the cost of change. And code, particularly shared code, tends to be refactored, updated, and changed over time. And this can reduce the fear a developer has about making changes because they don't completely understand the code that they're changing. And unit tests are an essential part of validating these changes and ensuring that problems introduced by changes are caught earlier. And then finally, adding unit tests can improve your app's design and architecture. So writing unit tests forces you to step back and think about what each method is supposed to do. So when a unit test is hard to write, it often means that you don't understand the requirements or that the method you're testing is too complex with too many side effects and it should be refactored to simplify it. Now unit tests are designed to be modular and to work independently of other tests. And as a result, they should be repeatable and fast so you can run the same test without changes and you should expect that you'd receive the same result. Unit tests should also be isolated and focused, so only test the system under test, and only one thing at a time. They should be self-contained, so you don't want to rely on external information or complex configuration. They should be independent of other tests, so you should be able to run them in parallel. They should also be fast, or else we won't run them, because we don't really want to wait around for unit tests to finish if it's going to take forever. And they also should be repeatable, so given the same data, they should always get the same result. And they should also be maintainable, so they should be well documented and also self-evident. 
Now, modern unit testing requires that your unit tests exist in an existing framework. And these frameworks allow for testing a number of unit tests together and monitoring your output. And there's a number of different unit testing frameworks available for .NET developers. But the one we're looking at today is NUnit. And NUnit includes support for running tests in a host and can also be used to test functionality of our mobile applications. And there's also support for integration into IDEs like Visual Studio or Xamarin Studio. But we're using Visual Studio today. So while we're using NUnit for today's course, you'll often find other unit test frameworks such as Microsoft Test and XUnit have similar mechanisms and often styles. While there are other unit test frameworks available, Test Cloud currently only supports NUnit up to version 2.6.4, so we're going to be using NUnit going forward today. Now, when you're writing unit tests, keep in mind that you're wanting to test an isolated, very specific behavior in a method. So don't try and test everything about a method with one unit test. You're testing behaviors and not methods. So you should have multiple tests for a single method. So start with testing primary cases, move to edge cases, testing for success initially is actually more gratifying than testing for failure. So write your tests assuming that the behavior you're testing is already there using the specifications to drive the test creation, not the code and the method that's being tested. So if you're having trouble writing the tests, this can also indicate that the code or behavior is hard to understand. So you might need to revisit requirements or maybe even refactor your solution to make it more testable. So that could actually be an indication of a lack of coupling in the design. Now, once you create your test project, you then need to create the tests. Unit tests are often grouped together based on what you are testing. So we call this the system under test, or SUT. And you'll find that you often create one or more testing classes for each system under test that we want to test. Now, a testing class is just a C-sharp class that's marked or decorated with a special attribute that identifies it as a class containing unit tests. And you can see the end unit attribute here, test fixture. And unit also uses attributes to identify the specific unit tests to run. So the methods marked with the test attribute are the ones that will be tested. Now, if you don't have that attribute on that method, end unit will actually ignore that method. Now, these attributes come from the end unit component, which can be added to your project. Now, you can add just a new C sharp source file to your testing project and start adding tests to it. So it's not really a special testing class item that's used, it just looks for the test fixture and the test attributes. Now one of the most important things you can do when building unit tests is deciding on a standard naming convention. As your test suite gets larger, and they will, it's going to be harder to remember exactly what a test is for. So names like test count property become too generic or vague when that unit test fails. So you end up searching through your code base to see what was tested. And a good practice is to create long names which reflect three things. So what's the class or module being tested? So we call this the system under test. What logic is being tested? What should you expect as the result of the test? And normally when we're writing code, we're all about the conciseness of short method names. But remember that we won't be calling any of these methods. In fact, the test runner will. So names are really just part of the test documentation. So it's OK if they're longer than you're really used to. So with a good naming scheme, when a test fails, you can see it in the test results, and you'll know what the test was trying to check and what the proper result should have been. And this will likely connect to some piece of code that's been recently changed without necessarily having to go back and work through the test code to figure out what it was actually trying to do. So what does a unit test look like? In fact, we're actually going to switch back to the application. I'm just going to head over to the exam. And in this particular part, what we're going to do is we're going to add an NUnit project to our solution. So I'm just going to right click on the solution. I'm going to select Add New Project. And what I'm really creating is a class library. So we'll just wait for Visual Studio to initialize the templates. All right, and we're in Visual C Sharp here, and we're looking for a class library. So we're going to create exam dot unit tests. So that's our package. And what we'll do is we'll add the nUnit library to that project. So we'll go ahead, manage NuGet packages. This is just for a generic standalone unit test. So I'm just going to 
looking for and you know. And it should pop up. Now you'll see the end unit version 3 and also the 2.64. I actually need end unit 2.64. Oh, there we are, end unit. So I'll switch over to 2.64. It's probably a little bit further down. There we go. And we'll install that into our project. That's fine. Nice and installed there. And this is my test here. And I'm just going to quickly rename this test. To game plus. This is going to test the game class that we have in our solution. Now I also need to make sure I'm referencing that portable class library in my project as well. So that's the exam portable class library, <laughs> exam portable class library, just so I can test those particular parts. Now remember, there's a few things that we want to add in here. So if I want to make this a test fixture, I need to add appropriate attribute and I'll also need to make sure I'm adding the appropriate type the attribute there for the test so I'm going to add a single method here to test the game creation so I'm going to pass in a fairly long name so I'm Checking for the correct initialization, and this should be okay. Just make sure I'm using the end unit framework there, and then I can start writing the code. So there's three sections that I want to have this unit test. I want to have the arrange, the act, and the assert. So in the arrange section, I'm going to define essentially the setup part. So I'm going to create a new object here. This is going to be a new quiz question. And I'll just provide some details for that particular implementation. So the question is going to be Xamarin Forms is awesome. I need to provide the answer. The answer is true in this regard. And I'll also need to provide an explanation. Equal to so. Excellent. So there's our, our question that we'll be using. Now the act here, we're just going to create a new game object. And the game requires a new list of quiz questions. And I'll just pass in that question there. And then my assert is really just checking that things are in place. So I'm going to check that really what I've got at the moment is that there's one question in the game's question count. All right, so a very basic unit test. So that's what a unit test looks like. It has this arrange, which is really the setup part. It has the act, where you do the work that you're testing. And then the assert, which really just checks that you're doing the right thing. Now I can actually go ahead and, and run this in my unit test runner. So this is the test explorer. I need to make sure that I, I build this first. Yep, it's still building. And then I'll go and select run all. That's going to run the unit test. I should see the output if it's successful. I'll get the green light. If it's not, I'll normally get a red cross. So it's just running the test at the moment, just initializing the unit test. So you can see the, the test harness doing its work. Once it's initialized, it shouldn't take too long. It's 91 milliseconds to run it. And the test worked nice and cleanly. So interestingly enough, the assertion step is really the, the validation. And successful unit tests end up with the expected result. And you typically validate that result using the assert class. And this class is built into end unit. 
and has a bunch of static methods to validate different conditions. For example, here you can see we're verifying the number of questions matches the expected result, which is one. And many people actually advocate using a single assert at the end, just to ensure that we're only testing one thing about our code unit. But this also makes the test much easier to understand, as you can know immediately what has failed. However, this isn't really a rule in unit testing. Many people will put multiple asserts into their test to check various facets about the code unit and to cut the number of required tests. Now, the arrange and act aspects of a unit test use your C-sharp skills and knowledge of the classes that you're working with. And the assert class allows you to test the functionality of an application to a finer degree and has a series of static methods that perform the test. And the test will normally take enough parameters to check that the test is valid and then an optional message to display in the event that the test is unsuccessful. So here you can see we're using the R equal, so we're just checking that these values are actually the same as what's expected. But there's plenty of other static methods on the assert class. You can see a few here, things like R not equal, uh, catch, so you can actually deliberately see what to do with an exception. You can see if values are greater or greater than or equal to, and there's plenty of great values, is not null, is empty, contains, there's plenty of options. And really, at the end of the day, all it's really doing is just checking a condition. Is my condition being met? If it's not, then it's gonna throw an exception. That's actually how the unit test knows that there's a problem with it, if there's an, any exceptions being thrown. And if the code is great, then the assert will not throw an exception and the unit test will pass. Now, unit testing is an important part of the testing strategy to validate that individual methods and sections of your code operate correctly under isolation. And it's been around a long time, so most of you are likely either doing it today or at least are familiar with it. And maybe you might be using another framework like MS Test, so you could add unit tests to your applications if you wanted to. However, it's not the only kind of testing that we want to perform. Another type of testing is UI testing. And this is where we put our apps through the paces by interacting with the user interface. And this is a form of outside in testing where we drive the user interface by interacting with the app. So we tap buttons, we enter text, and respond to prompts to verify the app behaves properly and that it does what we expect it to. Now this form of testing is extremely important, but it's often done manually and also without a structured repeatable plan. And it's often where you just test out the part of the app that you just changed. And you don't try it on every possible hardware or operating system combination. But it's important in the mobile space, particularly because there's so many combination of devices and platforms out there that our apps are gonna target. And this is particularly true for Android, where there's over 10,000 devices supporting Android 2.3 or higher. But iOS is actually becoming more fragmented as well. So performing UI testing also reveals problems with size assumptions. So the text might be cut off or not visible without scrolling. You might have designed for a regular screen, but not notice that the application doesn't present very well on smaller or larger screens. So UI testing can also reveal compatibility issues, so places where we use an API that's unavailable on a specific operating system level. So doing this manually is expensive, so we're gonna talk about what we can do to automate our tests using Xamarin UI tests. 